Hey guys, let's get more news about Warriors, but first, don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. Kobe Bryant didn't talk with Jeremy Lin after Lakers PG tried to mess with him. Nick Young reveals how Kobe Bryant's silent treatment towards Jeremy Lin during a Lakers season sheds light on Bryant's intensity. Nick Young recently shared an intriguing story on Vlad TV about an incident that led to Kobe Bryant giving his teammate Jeremy Lin the silent treatment for an entire season. According to Young, this fallout occurred after Lin attempted to engage with Bryant during a Lakers practice. Nobody really messed with Kobe like that, to the point of just messing with him. I remember when Jeremy Lin tried, but it didn't end well. It didn't end well for Jeremy. I felt bad for Jeremy Lin. I forgot exactly what happened, but I know they didn't really click at all. After that one practice, Jeremy Lin tried to get in the middle of the huddle and say a couple of words, like, we could keep it on the court, but don't do this or do something, and Kobe said something, something I forgot, and then didn't talk to Jeremy for the rest of the season. 248. Kobe, known for his fierce competitiveness and high standards, was not receptive to Lin's approach. Young mentioned that Kobe responded to Lin's attempt to speak in a manner that immediately shut him down. Although Young couldn't recall Kobe's exact words, the effect was clear, Kobe essentially dismissed Lin, and from that point on, he did not speak to him for the rest of the season. This incident highlighted the challenging environment Lin faced as he tried to find his place on a team led by one of the most intense and focused players in NBA history. The silent treatment from a player of Bryant's stature would have been a challenging experience for Lin. It underscores the intensity of playing alongside one of the NBA's greatest players. For Bryant, maintaining a high level of focus and commitment was non-negotiable, and any disruption to this was dealt with decisively. This story also sheds light on the challenges Lin faced throughout his career. Despite his breakout Lin sanity period, Lin often found himself battling for respect and a stable role within various teams. His stint with the Lakers from 2014 to 2015, particularly under the shadow of Kobe Bryant, was another chapter in his ongoing struggle for acceptance and validation in the league. Nick Young doesn't see any issues with Kobe Bryant's parents selling his memorabilia. In the same interview on Vlad TV, Nick Young shared his perspective on the controversy surrounding Kobe Bryant's parents selling his memorabilia. When asked about his thoughts on the matter, Young expressed a pragmatic view, saying, They need the money, I think. If you ain't got the funds, you gotta do what you gotta do. For a clock. This comment comes in the wake of one of the most notable sales, Kobe Bryant's 2000 NBA championship ring, which he had given to his father. The ring fetched nearly a million dollars at auction, highlighting the high value of memorabilia associated with the late basketball legend. Draymond Green crosses line by giving tips to Mavs player on live TV. Draymond Green must really want the Dallas Mavericks to beat the Minnesota Timberwolves. The Golden State Warriors star Green, who is part of the TNT studio crew for the Western Conference Finals, went viral after Sunday's Game 3 over the moment that he shared with Mavs big man Daniel Gafford on the air. Gafford was being interviewed by the TNT crew after sealing Dallas win over Minnesota with a late blocked shot followed by an and one dunk. Green took some time to give advice to Gafford during the segment. I don't have a question, I just want to give you something, said Green. Anytime you catch the ball in that pocket and you're not comfortable going forward, you got DHO, dribble handoff, that way to that guard on that side, or, you got uphill back to the guy that just passed, it to, you. Then that puts you in a roll situation, and, you, can, get a dunk. So if you feel uncomfortable, just know you can go to that, Green added. And I think you've been doing a great job. It's beautiful seeing you play with the basketball. Gafford normally plays as a traditional pick-and-roll lob threat for the Mavs guards. But when defenses trap the ball handler after Gafford sets the pick, he often finds himself in the situation of having to receive the pass around the free-throw line and make a play. Gafford will sometimes then dribble towards the basket and risk either traveling or otherwise losing the ball. Meanwhile, Green is very well-versed in what to do out of those situations, as he has spent over a decade now making plays out of the short roll when the defense doubles Warriors teammate Steph Curry off the screen. 
If Gafford is not comfortable reading the situation and finding the open man like Green often does, he has guards on either end of the floor that he can hand off the ball to, creating another makeshift pick and roll where Gafford can end up at the rim for a dunk. That is the essence of what Green was telling Gafford there. Of course, Green's advice gave rise to another issue, an active NBA player openly providing tips to only one team in an ongoing playoff series. Green is not even trying to give off the illusion of impartiality since he has already taken big swipes at both Timberwolves fans and even some Timberwolves players during the series. So while that was a nice pointer purely from a basketball standpoint, it may have ultimately been an inappropriate one for Green to give as a member of the media. Clippers Among Teams with Interest in Chris Paul May 27, 2024 at 7.57 a.m. Central Standard Time, by Arthur Hill A return to the Clippers is possible for Chris Paul this summer, Mark Stein writes in his latest Substack column. Sources tell Stein that L.A. is among several teams that would be interested in the 39-year-old point guard if he becomes a free agent. Paul spent six years with the franchise and was one of the stars of the Lob City era. Stein previously cited the Lakers and Spurs as potential landing spots for the 12-time All-Star. Paul told reporters last month that he doesn't plan to retire after Golden State lost in the play-in tournament, and coach Steve Kerr expressed a desire to keep him, saying, he's still got good years left. Paul prefers to stay close to his family in Los Angeles, Stein adds. Stein cautions that reaching free agency will be the first step for Paul, who has a non-guaranteed $30 million salary for next season. He has an early salary guarantee date of June 28, so the Warriors have a little more than a month to decide whether he's worth that investment. Stein points out that Golden State's options include guaranteeing Paul's salary and trading him to another team. The guarantee date could be extended, but that would require Paul's consent. Paul appeared in 58 games and made 18 starts this season after being traded twice last summer. He averaged 9.2 points, 3.9 rebounds, and 6.8 assists in 26.4 minutes per night while shooting 44.1% from the field and 37.1% from three-point range. Stein sources say another possibility for the Clippers is Kyle Lowry, who turned 38 in March. Lowry will be an unrestricted free agent after finishing the season with the Sixers, who signed him in February following a buyout with Charlotte. The Clippers' summer moves will be affected by Russell Westbrook's decision on a $4 million player option, Stein adds. The 35-year-old point guard, who has spent the past season and a half with the team, has until June 29 to determine whether he wants to opt out and test free agency. And are you a fan? What do you think of Chris Paul's exit? Leave your opinion in the comments.